Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to be talking about how the process of translation differs in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Make sure you understand that translation is that final step in gene expression where you have genetic information stored in DNA and then it is expressed through way of a, an mRNA intermediate which is used to make protein in the process of translation. So now let's get started talking about translation in prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. Prokaryotes, we're talking about bacteria and archaea. Eukaryotes, we're talking about things like animals and plants and fungi and algae and so forth. So translation occurs after transcription in eukaryotes. Remember, transcription is making the RNA using DNA as a template, so making that RNA intermediate. So translation occurs after transcription in eukaryotes, but at the same time as transcription in prokaryotes. This is referred to as coupled transcription and translation, where they're occurring simultaneously. The lifespan of the mRNA transcript is quite short in prokaryotes and much longer in eukaryotes. With prokaryotes, their mRNA usually only lasts a few seconds or maybe a few minutes, whereas with eukaryotes, the mRNA lasts a much longer amount of time. We're talking like hours or even days. Prokaryotes and eukaryotes also have different ribosomes that they use. Remember that ribosomes are the cellular machinery where the mRNA is used as a template to build proteins. Prokaryotes use 70S ribosomes. Eukaryotes use 80S ribosomes. Here the S is a Svedberg unit. I'll write that right here, Svedberg. Um, and it's just a sedimentation measure. So basically, uh, eukaryotes have 80S ribosomes. They sediment a little faster when they're centrifuge. Um, prokaryotes have these 70S ribosomes. They don't sediment as quickly. They're um, a little bit lighter, essentially. And remember that ribosomes are composed of protein subunits and also ribosomal RNA. And so not only are these sizes different, but the actual ribosomal proteins and ribosomal RNA that make up these ribosomes are different in prokaryotes versus eukaryotes. Prokaryotes and eukaryotes do use the same start codon, AUG, but upstream of that start codon, prokaryotes have a special sequence. It's AGG, AGG, remember A is adenine, uh, G is guanine, and this sequence is called the shine dalgarno sequence. So named for a couple of scientists. The shine dalgarno sequence helps to anchor the 70S ribosome to the mRNA in prokaryotes. This sequence is absent in eukaryotes. So eukaryotes don't have a shine dalgarno sequence but they still have ways to anchor their ADS ribosomes to their mRNA, and that is through using the five prime cap and something called a COSAC sequence. The COSAC sequence is not as rigid as this AGG, AGG. There's a few amino acids that have to be the same, but some of the uh, amino acids in and around those set amino acids are variable um, and so it doesn't have like a, a very defined um, sequence the way that the shine algorithm sequence does. Prokaryotic mRNA also can have multiple start sites. This is called polycystronic. So polycystronic just means that multiple genes can be on one mRNA transcript or the information from multiple genes. And so that encodes multiple polypeptides or proteins. You know, polypeptides and proteins are the same thing. Um, so prokaryotic mRNA may have only one start site and, and only code for one uh, protein, but it can also have many. Whereas eukaryotic mRNA only ever has one, and that is called monocystronic. So where one transcript results in one polypeptide, and that's always true for eukaryotic mRNA. Prokaryotes and eukaryotes also have different types and 
and numbers of initiation, elongation, and termination factors. So initiation factors are small proteins that help get translation started. Elongation factors are proteins that make sure that it keeps going. And termination factors are um, proteins that help translation end at the appropriate time. And so prokaryotes and eukaryotes have different types of these factors and also different numbers of these factors. Prokaryotic translation is also a lot faster. Prokaryotes can assemble roughly 20 amino acids per second. Remember that amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. Eukaryotic translation, on the other hand, is quite a bit slower, averaging at only one amino acid per second. And also the initiator tRNA in proteins carry, uh, the initiator tRNA in prokaryotes carries a different amino acid or modified amino acid relative to eukaryotes. Specifically eukaryotes, the very first tRNA that comes into the ribosome at the start of translation to bring what's going to be the first amino acid in the polypeptide, it's always carrying an amino acid known as methionine. And this is what methionine looks like. However, the initiator tRNA in prokaryotes is carrying a modified version of methionine called formal methionine. Um, and formal methionine basically just has this formal group that's shown right here that makes it different from the um, methionine that's seen uh, in eukaryotes and that's seen in other parts of the prokaryotic polypeptide. This formal group though, that's at the very start of the prokaryotic polypeptide, it does get removed when translation is over. Prokaryotes and eukaryotes also use the same universal genetic code. What that means is that in mRNA, there are codons, which are sets of three non-overlapping nucleotides that code for specific amino acids. So for example, the start codon AUG always codes for methionine. Um, it's um, gonna be this kind of methionine in eukaryotes and this kind of methionine in, in um, prokaryotes, but it always codes for methionine. And then there's other sets of triplets of three nucleotides that code for different amino acids. And that code is the same in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. That's why you can take a gene from a human, like for human insulin, put it into a bacterium and the bacterium can then make an, a protein identical to what the human cells make because we all use that same universal genetic code. And we all use the same 20 amino acids, but some prokaryotes have two additional amino acids and those are selenocysteine and pyrolysine. So some prokaryotes will have selenocysteine and pyrolysine um, in some of their polypeptides, but eukaryotes um, are just sticking to the other 20 amino acids. If you're interested in learning more about couples transcription and translation in prokaryotes, you can see my video on that topic. Um, you can also see my video on the central dogma of molecular biology, which explains how information travels from DNA through that RNA intermediate into a polypeptide. I've also got a nice video on this universal genetic code explaining how it's used and how mRNA is read to build uh, polypeptides. And then I've also got a video looking at the process of transcription and how it differs in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So feel free to check out those videos and thanks for watching Biology Professor. I'll see you next time.